All right, so finally we managed to bring this inside. So the laid bed here, the headstock, uh, banjo and the tailstock. This is bed extension, inverter and the control box. And uh, legs are here and uh, my beautiful boy here as well. A little help today. So should be fun getting this uh, together. Uh, but first I'll clean it up. Uh, unpack the legs and we'll move from there. This is my beautiful no. wife that doesn't like to be filmed. No. Turn around. No, Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Ajde. Ovo će tu stati. 
Ona se mi dolja. To bi, to bi bilo dobra pozicija, tu će ovo još stati i tu bi mogao onda još oštriti. Ne bi odmah možda još mogu malo samo svim. Kako predivan su. Ba, ba. So, at this point I'm alone. My family has other things they need to do. Other chores, let's say. So, I just need to clean this up. I do get a rag as well from Neurighter, which is always nice. So with the WD-40 I just clean up any residue of um, that oil thing that all leads come covered to protect them from rust and shipping. As you can see this is a big, big banjo. Clean up the other side as well. As you can see where it clamps from factory really high, and I'll actually show you that later how to adjust that. So I still need to clean up the bedways, but you can see that goes and runs nice and smoothly which is always what you want when you have a big banjo like this so this is the standard this is 30 mil tool post and this is 400 mil tool rest so really large good for uh, longer spindles but for the face work i have a smaller one i think it's uh, 200 mil or something like that adjust this to my position so that's okay for now and now I'll clean up the tailstock this is really big chunk of metal here so clean that as, as well so this I think has 150 mil um, quill here or six inches yes so six inches actually a little bit more uh, 165 um, mil so just return that roughly and so I can clean the quill here Okay, so this is bed extension and also additional uh, support for the outboard uh, turning, uh, which I'll do in one of the videos. I have in plan to maybe build a table completely on the lathe, uh, so should be quite interesting. So let's unpack this. So this is the adapter this end goes in your banjo and then you have another um, 30 mil post uh, where your actually tool rest goes when you're outboard turning so quite good stuff although I rarely turn outboard and only probably for that specific job I'm going to do it uh, but usually I just keep the headstock in line with the bed. Uh, this is the leg that supports the, the bed extension when you want to do outboard turning. So screws and the adjustable feet goes here so so you can see this end will go on a, a bed extension here 
for outboard turning or the proper outboard turning and that it's here and uh, now there is a I believe a quick sort of a setup um, like a plate then just clamp clamp it on it's much faster method, method than the screws here uh, but I didn't get it like I said uh, I'm probably only going to turn once uh, on the outboard side here so I'm not that common in that situation let's say so usually the bed extension will live here where I need it the most Okay, so I installed the bed extension here and uh, if you just line it up the best way you can by feel and then park the clamping plate over the seam and tighten it up um, with the bolt slightly loose and then tighten it now as this uh, is tightened on the joint here and it should work quite okay as you can see there is no knocking sound or anything that's quite good so i hope you can see when i tighten the banjo where the lever is so if you use uh, any kind of gouge or anything you could bump into handle so i want to have it lock somewhere around here so there is this nut here on the clamping plate and you just loosen it up And the handle goes down maybe a bit more okay maybe slightly higher See, although it's a much heavier banjo than all of my previous leads, I can just manipulate it with one hand quite easily, and yeah, I think that should be okay. Maybe a smidge more up, like so. Yeah, I'm going to keep it for now here. Now, what I'll do quickly is install the bench and the dust hood here and uh, I'll tune you in and show you all of the feature of this Twister XL. And uh, here it is in all of its glory and you, as you can see, as I mentioned, this will occupy pretty much all of the space here. Now, this won't be blank for long, uh, there is something else coming here, uh, but that's for another video. Uh, so, dust extractor is changed or position of it at least uh, so this port as you can see this is quite a long um, bed here uh, so this dust hood will cover pretty much half of it and I have another port here uh, when I'm sanding let's say a long spindle I have another port to suck the dust up so that's surrounding area done and the bench here and the dust hood here as well but now let's focus on the star of the show, and that is Twister XL uh, lathe. It's a two horsepower lathe, as you can see here. It's a three-phase motor going through induction to 220, or oh, sorry, 230 uh, volt. Uh, so quite standard, uh, but it's two horsepower, and uh, this is a newer model. Uh, it's 2022 year, but it's a new model in terms of some of the features like uh, digital readout on the movable controller here, which I always have in sort of this position either here or here above this um, pin here for rotating the head. Uh, here is another digital readout. So if you're turning let's say and you can turn and I'll show you this you can slide headstock pretty much anywhere on the bedways and you can turn outboard on that end as well 
um, or on this leg here or on leg here or in the middle here where you remove this plate strong magnets and you can attach here the bed extension and you can turn here with a slightly bigger um, diameter so that then would be I believe 24 inches or something like that so so back here uh, we can see the higher um, or standard speed actually so the lower torque settings but higher speed goes from 150 to 3600 rpm and um, the second one which you have the more torque setting but slower speed from 60 to uh, 1350 rpm so um, and you can see here the controller so big mushroom to stop it uh, these lights actually come on so you can see everything now is uh, powered on and just before I show you the how it works just to show you the inverter here so we have two sockets 1800 watts uh, combined we can outsource let's say drill or lamp or whatever and uh, there is a master switch here on off and uh, this area here for uh, if you pull it down this toggle switch then it's a standard uh, speed uh, or stopping speed let's say and if I'm turning let's say way bigger stuff or maximum let's say diameter or something log or whatever then you can switch it up and then it has a slow rate stopping uh, so uh, you know uh, and start as well so you don't don't let's say over speed your um, your piece especially when it's massive log or something like that so going back to controller box here uh, so we have a big mushroom again on switch which you'll see lights up which is quite convenient um, potential meter for speed and forward and reverse and if you switch in forward you'll get this light telling you that you're in uh, reverse and just pop it back up and uh, so on you can see lights up nicely so 2000 rpm and it stops quite fast so here we have the belt settings and we can just grab a screwdriver and just so you can see big belt here we have two pulleys or two type of pulleys so a bigger torque smaller torque but more speed so for now i'll keep it on a lower setting just because i like sometimes turn up to 2000 rpm uh, just convenient for me so i'll tighten this a little bit later so here there is no classic hand wheel instead you have this uh, sort of a um, tube like wheel let's call it uh, this is for indexing so you tighten this in and you find the position that you want so let's say number one you tighten it up and you can see that's quite solid on so just remember to unwind it and it has a spring so it won't fall out but uh, it won't either go inside which is important so this has big bearing or a single be bearing here on the back and two bearings in the front so that's the headstock end and uh, the banjo here is really massive now <laughs> i forgot that it's this big so uh, what I've done here I will focused on getting the uh, just the right uh, no more let's say of the diameter uh, for the dust hood here so uh, it's more effective let's say but I forgot that the banjo is quite long so you can see I bumped here and I'm not all the way let's say to the middle um, now it's not a big deal because you can position it like so just place it like this I'm doing this one hand but you can see I can do it let's say like this uh, probably in a week or two uh, I'll 
need to find a sort of a, a brush type uh, screen let's say so I'll probably cut up cut out this section here um, that way the banjo if I need can go here uh, same will go on uh, this part of the hood here and it will also seal up so the airflow won't be affected uh, but that doesn't concern me at the moment so the lathe is functional which I was without a lathe for around four days which <laughs> it, it, it's quite tough for me so uh, the bench here is quite lower than the, the lip here and you want this since the banjo is quite long um, you want the space here so your tools can fit under it so you, you don't have to constantly move your tools so you can see and again I'm doing this one-handed and it's really nice it glides easily so really really happy with that with that just want to point out something um, my lathe is bolted down to the concrete now it's completely not necessary let's say uh, it weighs with the bed extension here uh, around 330 or 40 kilos so quite a lot i'll put on the screen how much that's in pounds so it's around over 700 pounds so it's a really heavy lathe um, probably doesn't need bolting down however as you know i always like to do it it just gives a little more stability let's say for maybe off balance pieces or something like that uh, so it's bolted down and it, again it's uh, the perfect height for me i just had to put a uh, shim around five mil or a quarter inch something like that beneath the feet uh, so beneath the legs so it's not sitting directly on the concrete so again a lot of weight behind this so it's not necessary but uh, just be aware that if you put the rubber feet it will raise the the weight a little bit more which in my case i just preferred to have at this size uh, here you can see 500 mil bed extension and uh, the banjo here so the banjo like i've shown uh, has a travel quite a bit of travel so six inches and it's a um, acme thread so it's a nice coarse thread and you can see that just keeps on going out and six inches so that's quite a long travel and uh, again it's nice and smooth operation and it has a self ejecting uh, feature as well the locking handle is here and I adjust it as well with a, a screw underneath much like on the banjo so it just glides a little bit easier as you can see and just tighten it up wherever you need to and you can see this end here now they actually do provide longer bed extension with the leg as well so i think it's uh it will end up maybe here or even maybe on the step here so for now i opted for this uh, bed extension. So just to be clear, uh, I don't get everything for free. So like I said, I sold my Killinger lathe, my workhorse that was here in this left part, and I sold it uh, to compensate, let's say, for the for this uh, twister here. So it's not free. I did get a decent a discount, uh, but it's not free. So. Uh, if that's something that you're interested in so like i said here will be something for the next in the hopefully in the next few weeks uh, video what i'm planning on doing it here i still have here the the hose uh for vacuuming the floor and everything uh so uh i'm just curious to see how long actually with the bed extension uh how long can we turn and i can go pretty much all the way up to here maybe even more because the clamping plate is here so maybe a little bit more here we go so and let's back it up to here and I'll put the spur drive here see uh, they do provide 
uh, this uh, spindle lock and just goes here and you can unlock uh, or unscrew your chuck or faceplate in this case uh, so you know, for another video I'll convert this into sanding pad or something similar uh, so you can see the regular spindle here uh, threads M33 by a three and a half mil so quite standard for Europe I think um, yeah so let's see the total distance here so between the centers I can turn let me just see uh, so 140 centimeters so that's quite a long uh, distance and uh, if you're not like using tailstock and you're using like longer handle tools so again it's nice to have a bed extension just to uh, roll the uh, the tailstock out of the way instead of just taking it off because that thing is heavy uh, yeah so that's pretty much it on it uh, I think it's time to actually spin something on it um, to see how it works this is a quick little bowl shallow bowl or uh, deeper uh, plate uh, from box elder um, and just going to turn that quickly at least the outside just to test out the lay now the foot has warped quite a bit so I'm trying to find to at least hold on four points just until I get the groove here okay so first time turning this is 1000 rpm raise the rest slightly more and let's put a little recess here you can turn it around so I need to get used to bigger rest and um, a bigger banjo but to rest I'll order some smaller ones so this is running at 1300 rpm I'm curious how it sounds on the on the microphone spindle gauge A little bit more here and I'll throw up the top this is the biggest jaws that I have Now this is a little too tall of a foot, so I'll reduce it uh, with a refiner. Okay, that isn't too bad of a surface but I can do it better I think it's box elder although it doesn't smell like it I'll use a refiner to smooth out the outside
definitely not box elder. But it works quite nice. Uh, so that's ready for for sanding. So quick sand. Yeah, so that's you can see the bowl at least the outside done finished up up to 180 grit just for uh, for the sake of the demo let me just shut off the light here um, so I'm not sure what this is uh, but it does sand out quite quickly yeah so as you saw the lathe works beautifully it's a uh, it's time to finish this lovely day and uh, this lovely video i just want to say thank you again to my writer to marcus to raymond for making this happen i hope there is a lot more uh, collaboration in the future one could be really really soon um, i hope it happens and if it does happen then you really don't want to miss it and it it's not a late just to be clear on that um yeah it's a uh, dream come true that i didn't know it was a dream until i turned on that wood turning event and i just fell in love with this lathe it's a it's a top tier of this manufacturer the stratos xl is just uh, one lathe above this one uh, because it has a, a bigger uh, horsepower motor and a slightly bigger capacity here over the bed but other than that beneath the headstock it's the same and uh, pretty much close in terms of weight as well so um yeah it's a slightly cheaper laid than uh, equivalent let's say of wickmark or uh, robust uh, one way but it, it's uh, same quality i would say uh, it's a really nice nicely made machine with a lot of attention to details and uh, in the video description you'll see a lot of affiliate links for Neuwriter from before but i'll add of course the lathe here and uh, you can check that out and some other stuff that Neuwriter offers so yeah, I'm uh, just really, really happy. And as you saw, I had a lovely assistance for my wife and my son while the younger one was in the kindergarten. And uh, we managed to, to, go, to put this together, at least the heavy bits, and I could do the rest on my own. And um, this is the first time that all of them was involved on a single piece of equipment like this. And uh, you can tell we are all really, really excited about this one. So it's a big step for me. It's the biggest lathe I ever owned or ever worked on. And I worked on some heavy lathes, um, quite old lathes from ex Yugoslavia. But this is just another another step above. So yeah, as you can imagine, you're going to see this lathe in action. Um, I can't wait to get back into production run. I uh, have a few orders that I need to complete. Uh, so I can't wait to to set it up for my production. It's 90% uh, done, but uh, some of the things might shift a little bit uh, just because now it's single eight instead of two. And um, I'll tune you in or just show you the upgrades that I've done if it happens. So uh, you can imagine in the next uh, videos in the future you're going to see how I max it out how I'm going to build a table on it uh, tabletop and everything um, legs and uh, and turn as well some really uh, tiny stuff so uh, this lathe can handle it all and it should be really really fun and um, a lot of things should happen in the future as well like signature tool hopefully in uh, two weeks everything should be up and running so a lot of uh, good stuff will be happening hopefully really really soon so uh, thank you for watching thank you for uh, for all your support and uh, see you in the next video